Hello everyone, this is Corey Mitchell with your Swing Trading Stock Market Outlook for the week of October 9th. Each week I go through the same process of looking at the market and then that helps me decide how aggressive I'm going to be in trading individual stocks. So I go through the same things each week, looking at health indicators, how the indices are performing, trade lists, sectors, and that's basically the first step in my overall approach, which I teach in the uh, Stock Market Swing Trading course, uh, the Complete Method Swing Trading course, which you can see on the right side of the web page or under the Courses tab. And heading into the week of October 9th, conditions are still poor, so we're going to get into that, why that's the case, what would have to happen for conditions to get better. So I'm currently holding off on deploying capital on swing trades until conditions improve. There are some watch lists that you can check out for when conditions do improve, uh, or since they're a little weak, you can also check these for some potential short trades if you do that. So we have the best swing trading stocks list for October. That is simply a list of very strong and very weak stocks recently. So both long side and short side. I update a current stocks watch list, which is actual setups that are forming. This has not been updated in a while because conditions have been poor. So there's not really too much point uh, me updating it because I can't trade until conditions move closer to better or good. And at that point, I start updating that list because I'm actually looking for trades again. You can always look for setups on these other top performing sectors or stocks, or sorry, top performing ETFs or stocks. And if you're more into the investing side, when conditions are poor, I have been buying stocks. I recently updated the buy and hold stock list and when the market's declining, I'm looking at those lists for longer term investments, so not really related to swing trading per se, but looking a year or two out uh, or more stocks that I want to own if I can pick them up on the cheap. Hey, that's uh, great. So there's these lists, buy the dip stock list, buy and hold, and best long term dividend stocks. So you can check out those, give you something to do while uh, the market's in correction like we're in right now how the indices are doing. So I look at four different indices, the NASDAQ, which is tech stocks, S&P 500, which is large cap, uh, and then the NYSE Composite, a very wide array of stocks from all industries, very different sizes of companies, and the Russell 2000, which is smaller companies. And then I also have just thrown on a couple other charts, the uh, Canadian Index and Bitcoin. So from a price action perspective, these are all still in a pullback. We can see that nice uptrend we had through the early part of 2023, and we are in a pullback. Trying to move up, nice pop on Friday in all the indices, but it hasn't really turned anything yet. So we wanna see more upside before I want to get involved. We want to see this type of action, this more uptrending behavior get involved. It's just easier to make money than trying to pick an exact bottom. And the health indicators are pretty good at uh, turning positive when it's a good time to trade. So we'll look at that in just a moment. But from a price action perspective, this is why I'm staying out. We are dropping. The Canadian index, all year it's been in this big range, broke below it, and moved above and just starting to move back into it so if this moves up has a pullback inside that old range those are you know sometimes things we can look for that this was potentially a bottom but again too early to say quite yet but we do have a possible false breakup out that bottom bitcoin ranging as well but moving up off the lows currently in about the middle of that range so that's good to see of course I'm hoping it continues to the upside if you're long And let's look at the health indicator. So this is the S&P 500 on the chart. And I have some indicators along the bottom. This is how many stocks are above their 50-day moving average. So the red is how many, the percentage of S&P 500 stocks are above their 50-day moving average. And the more turquoise bluish line is all US stocks. How, what percent of those are above their 50-day moving average? And it's generally much easier to make money on the long side when you have lots of stocks moving up. So this was our period 
of long trading in here. And then once it starts to decline and we get this, you know, it keeps us out of all this crap here where there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity. Uh, same with this kind of flat rangy period would kept us out there as well. So good indicator and not that there's anything magical about the 50 day moving average. It's just a very crude measure of how many stocks are in short term uptrends. And right now we're really low. 20% of all US stocks, 17% of S&P 500 stocks are above their 50 day moving average. So most stocks in alignment with the indexes are in this pullback period. And I wanna see a little bit more upside. This would have to start moving up before I'd be interested in buying swing trades again. Volume, not really important at the moment. This is daily percentage movement of the S&P 500. Big drops of 2% or more in a single day are a major warning sign when they occur. And if we step aside, once those occur, we generally don't miss too much for the next few days. And we haven't had any of those days. This is more indicative of uptrending behavior when you have smaller daily movement. So even though we've been declining this is representative of overall uptrending movement, which is, I mean, it can change. You know, one day we could start getting 2% drops again, but at least for the moment, this is indicating at the moment that even though we're in a pullback, this is a minor one, likely part of an overall continuing uptrend. And so this is still a smiley face because we haven't had any of those big 2% drops we were seeing back, uh, earlier in the downtrend uh, last year, like 2022, we were seeing these 2% drops and then they just started to diminish and we're getting this lower movement uh, in between these lines, kind of about one to 2% to the upside and about 2% to the downside is where I start to get a little worried if we get those 2% downside, 2% downside in one day. This is the NYSE advanced decline line, advancing stocks minus declining stocks as a cumulative number each day. And sometimes it'll tell us something a little bit different than what the major indices are telling us. In this case, it isn't. It's just trending lower uh, along with the indices. So it's not really giving us anything and it's just declining in a downtrend uh, or in a pullback along with the indices. So that one's not giving us anything favorable either. So that one's a frowny face. This is up volume divided by total volume. Just gives us a sense of when there's really big selling enthusiasm or when there's really big buying enthusiasm. And there has not been anything yet. I'm basically looking for 90 levels or 10 levels. And even though there's some that were close here, they didn't quite uh, make it. So there's been nothing uh, recent in that one. So overall, you know, m more, more so than not, there's more health indicators that are saying this isn't great than saying that there are. Uh, this is a positive sign. If we start to see some upward movement, then these other ones should uh, validate that as well. So right now, just staying out of the market, we have one other thing that we look at, and that's how many quality setups there are and how many trades that are working. Sometimes I will continue to look for setups, not trade them, but watch them during market declines. It gives me a sense of how the market's behaving. I have not been doing that uh, recently simply because the indicators got pretty bad. So I was like, I'll just take some time off, stay out until they start to improve. So no information there currently. If you have been watching your own watch list, you may have some insight from those into uh, whether some stocks are performing well or not. Sectors on the move. Last week, it was only energy that was doing good. We have a couple more that picked up a little bit. Communication services, technology, and healthcare over the last week. Uh, energy got smoked though last week, but energy still holding up there kind of over the last month and the last three months in the tops there. But communication services, healthcare, financial, communication services, energy, financial, healthcare. So I've written in here communication services, technology, and healthcare because they've all been hanging in around the top on all three of these time frames. You may also want to add in financial there. It's hanging out, you know, still lost some last week, but relatively better than a lot of these other sectors. Say with over the last month, it's still hanging in there. 
and over the last three months, one of the better performers. So I'm just staying in cash right now, waiting for conditions to improve. And as you probably know, if you follow my stuff, I also day trade the Euro USD. And if I have time after that, if I'm not golfing or something, I'll also day trade stocks. And you can see how I do those in these courses. And what I like about the day trading is that it's not as determinant on market conditions overall. We sit there and trade for half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half, whatever you have time for. And usually we could pick up one or two trades, maybe three or four if we're trading for an hour to two hours. And we get those opportunities almost every day. Uh, maybe once a month or so, or twice a month, there might be a day where I don't have any trades. But there's always those opportunities. And then if you're more into the passive investing, like I briefly talked about before, or longer term investing, we can always just be regularly buying. So I'm doing that all the time as well, just picking up some uh, ETFs that I like, broadly diversified, that I just plan to hold for a long time. And whether the market goes up or down, I do that. So really, when we if we look at trading as like a whole approach, uh, yeah, we might be we might classify ourselves as swing traders or just as day traders, and we could just trade or just day trade, or just swing trade or day trade. But I also like to throw in the investing aspect there as well. And then pretty much with that, through all market conditions, we can generate an income from our trading. Which I think a lot of people who are going for trading as a career could go down that road of developing some different skill sets day trading, swing trading, investing. So that's your swing trading stock market outlook for the week of October 9th. I'm Corey Mitchell with Trade That Swing. Have a great week out there.